what is going on guys welcome back to another video on the channel today and in today's video we're not just going to be predicting the euro 2020 final but we're going to be predicting the euro and copa america final which are coming up in the next few days and yeah we're going to basically be going through those two games i'll also talk a little bit about the copa america third place game but not really too much but either way i'm going to record the for this and yeah um subscribe if you like the content like the video if you like it, all that stuff you know check the other videos on the channel and as i'm posting this i'm finishing up or you know getting closer to the end of the savia series and more content to come as you know the months go on either way, we're going to start off with this copa america game and we have argentina and brazil and it's probably the dream match of everyone wanted the two big uh, teams, Argentina, Brazil, you got Messi, you know, all the history with him in Argentina against, you know, the powerhouse that seems to be every year, Brazil. And the first things that I come into this game is, I think it's a slightly different Argentina team than before. Um, I want to touch up on that because it's a different type of Messi. It's a very hungry Messi. He really wants it. Um, if you go through all of these games, he, since the Copa America match day number one against Chile, he has assisted every single goal. He, he's assisted or scored every single goal for Argentina, except I believe like the second goal against Bolivia. He's had like, what, five goals and like six assists whatever it is he's been a part of every single goal for argentina except one additionally argentina have had some great um players i'm gonna analyze their lineup here just to show you kind of what they've kind of been playing as of late um obviously you got Lionel messi in here as like their main guy um but it seems like lartardo martinez is the main striker that they are playing with yes they have uh, the likes of sergio aguero um on the bench and things like that you can see here Andre, Alejandro Pavu Gomez, but they're preferring Lautaro Martinez, and honestly, he is doing really well lately. Additionally, we have Nicolas Gonzalez and Rodriguez and DePaul, who kind of the three weak spots on this team. I'm a bit confused, actually, on the manager and the selections, because I feel like the manager could let them down. Like, why are you choosing Nicolas Gonzalez over the likes of Di Maria, or choosing someone like uh, Rodriguez, or even DePaul over the likes of Alejandro Pavu Gomez, even have... Uh, um, Paradise in there. Yeah, I mean, besides that, though, I think they have a really good team. I think it's better than the previous team. It's just the team selection is a bit weird sometimes. But in the back, um, you have to really give credit to Martinez. Um, as we know, he's the keeper for Ashton Villa, and he has proved that he is a top keeper. Um, obviously, he won the penalty shootout here, and he's made some great saves. So that's a quick view on like the Argentina lineup right now. If we go over to Brazil here and just look at their last game against Peru um, and look at their sort of lineup, they have a lot of choices as well because these teams are deep. Um, in goal and stuff, they have Ederson right now, but obviously you could choose Allison. It looks like Ederson will start. In the back, obviously you got the a former PSG duo of Marquinhos and Thiago Silva, Renan Lodi and Danilo. You have the likes of Alexandro in there. The midfield is actually you kind of surprised some people. As a United fan, I love to see Fred starting, and he's been ahead of Fabinho uh, with Casemiro in there. And then they also have Richarlison up top. Neymar is definitely going to start no matter what. And you got Everton and Lucas Paqueta, which I think is probably their strongest line. Now, yes, they have the likes of Roberto Firmino, Fabinho, but I, I still kind of prefer, it, it's tough. I think maybe put in Firmino over Richarlison or something like that, and possibly Alexandro over Renan Lodi, but it's a very good uh, Brazil team on the paper. So, yeah, that, that's kind of just like looking at their lineups and, you know, how they've been playing lately. So, going back to the final here, I think the key points is... How is Argentina going to be able to break down Brazil? Is Argentina going to be able to get past Thiago Silva, who's looked really, really good? We know how good he was for Chelsea um, in the club season, even though he got injured in the UCL final. Personally, I think the three key points of this is how is Argentina's attack going to be able to break down Brazil? If it's Lionel Messi in the passing, Lautaro Martinez in the runs, all that stuff. Number two, is Brazil going to be clinical enough? Is Neymar, Neymar, you know, he's probably going to show up and have a good game, but are the likes of Richarlison, Lucas Paqueta, or Roberto Firmino, whoever is up there, Everton, or something like that, are they going to be clinical enough to score Brazil the goals and then the third key point I think is Argentina's defense you know we've seen it in the past you know Messi they've always had a good attack since Messi's been there with Messi and other players around him but you know 
How are they going to be able to stop Neymar and things like that? Is Otamendi good enough in the back? We already know Martinez is a quality player, but if the defense slips up, the goalie might not even have a chance. But personally, though, I am going to go with an Argentino win, and this is why. One, I think Messi is playing out of this world. He's playing better than he ever has in an Argentina shirt in his whole career, and yes, that's a big statement. Number two, I think Argentina's attack is kind of gelling together with the likes of Messi and Lautaro Martinez especially, and I think their bench is really good, especially if they bench Di Maria and Alejandro Papa Gomez. When they come off the bench, they are really good. So I think Argentina is actually going to beat Brazil, and my prediction is 2-1 Argentina win. I think Argentina are going to make it 2-0. Brazil will get one back, and and then Argentina will hold on and they're going to be Copa America champions. I'd love for that because I think Messi deserves it. So now going on to the Euro 2020 final. I got Italy and you got England. It's coming Rome. It's coming home. What side are we going to choose? I don't know. Either way, um, lineups and things like that is the first thing we want to do. Let's look at Italy's previous game against Spain, which they won on penalty shootout. And looking at their lineup, it's kind of solid. Um, it's it's They don't change it too much. Um, Donnarumma is going to be in goal. Di Lorenzo, Benucci, Cellini, and Emerson is probably going to be like that. Only thing is, you know, Emerson's been playing instead of Spinazzola, which is a big loss, but I think Emerson's not that much worse. Um, but Spinazzola was excellent before he tore his ACL. And then you got Barella, Giorgino, and Vadassi, which is a very good midfield. And then up top, you got the likes of Chiara and Mobile, Lorenzo Insigne, and Federico Chiesa. I honestly don't see it. I see it, this lineup being the exact same thing. Uh, obviously, on the bench, you got the likes of... Um, Manuel Locatelli or Berardi, Pestino, Bernadeschi, but they're I think they're one step lower than this attack and the rest of Italy. I just see Italy playing the exact same lineup. I don't think it's too hard um, to predict their lineup for this game. But England, on the other hand, we know about England and especially their attack. It's not easy to predict. Um, okay, I've accidentally clicked on the highlights there. That did not mean to do that. Either way, you can see. England, I think Pickford's going to start. He's been starting. They've had a clean sheet every game except this one against Denmark, which is a free kick. By the way, that was actually the first free kick in all of Euro 2020 and Copa America that was not scored by Lionel Messi. Um, but either way, Pickford's probably going to start. In the back is where it gets interesting. Stones and Maguire are probably going to be the center backs. And Luke Shaw looks like he has the edge over Chilwell, and I think he'll stay left back. Right back, though, we could see Trippier go in for a walker, but I think walker is preferred. In the midfield, Phillips and Rice have kind of solidified their spots. So we don't have to worry too much about that. The attack is where it gets interesting. Harry Kane's definitely going to be striker, and uh, Sterling's definitely going to be left wing. But these two spots with Mount and Saka, Mount was not great in the last game, and Saka was good, but he's a young player, so I don't know if Southgate thinks that he has what it takes. So you could, instead of seeing Mount or Saka, which you could definitely see Mount and Saka, that's definitely a thing. You could see Grealish starting, you could see Foden starting, and maybe Sancho. I think those three could I could see starting. I don't really see a Marcus Rashford um, starting, which is fine as a United fan. I, need to, I want him to rest and things like that. But remember, England has a great bench, um, and there is Hack. They got Grealish, Rashford, who doesn't even play much because it's just so deep of a team. You got Sancho and Foden, um, even, you know, other great players. You got the quality backups of Bellingham or Henderson to change the game. But yeah, I think England's lineup, I'm predicting it to be the exact same you see here, except I actually think Grealish is going to start um, over... Mount. I don't know, just something about that. Might be an interesting choice, but that's what I think. Either way, going to predicting this game, Italy-England. I think um, we're going to see some insights here. It's Italy's 10th major tournament, 6th World Cup, 4 Euros. Um, only Germany has played more, actually a lot more. England's first ever appearance in a European Championship final, and their first major final since winning the 66th World Cup, which we know. Um, yeah, and, you know, a few other things here. But I think three key points is this is, is England going to be clinical enough? We've seen a clinical England with Sterling doing really well and being world-class and Kane and, you know, Saka, Mount, all contributing. But we've also seen a dead England against, like, Scotland where they completely blanked and their attack was just not there at all. Um, that's the first key point. Second key point is how good is Italy's defense going to be? You know, we know that in between these Euros, they reached a mark of getting a 1,000-plus minutes with 
without conceding a goal. And that's like, what, 10, 11 games in a row without conceding a goal? They finally conceded one, as we know, against Austria. And they also did concede one against Belgium and one against Spain. So we'll see if this clean sheet record goes. How good is Bonucci and Cellini? We know how world-class they are, but Cellini is aging, which could be a thing to maybe, you know, poke at. He's not the fastest. So, you know, the first key point is England's attack. Second is Italy's defense. And the third is who's dominating the midfield. And people are probably going to say Italy with the likes of Barella in there. Jorginho was really good, and he scored the winning penalty, as we know, um, versus, you know, maybe Phillips and Rice. They're good, but maybe not, you know, as good as the likes of Barella and Jorginho. Personally, I'm going to go with an Italy win in this one. I think they are going to win 2-0. I think they're going to basically get a goal at some point, maybe probably in the first half or something like that, or in the second half, make it 1-0, and then late on in the game, England's going to be pushing up, and Italy's going to find space in behind and break with, you know, their counterattack. And, yeah, I think they're going to win 2-0, and I simply think it's going to be because of that attack. Um, it's just gonna, I think, I feel like Chiesa or Insigne, not Imo, Imo is more of a, like a goal poacher, but I feel like Lorenzo Insigne or Federico Chiesa, one of them is gonna produce a magical moment, and I also think that midfield for Italy is just too, um, strong compared to England's midfield, Phillips and Rice got to get to another level, but guys, those are my predictions for the Euro 2020 final and Copa America final, it's gonna be interesting, I'm going with an Italy win, England, your suffering is gonna unfortunately continue without these trophies, and Argentina, Messi, is it time? for him to finally get his glory. Maybe not in the World Cup, but it's at least the Copa America. But those are my thoughts, guys. Subscribe, like the content, like the video, like because that is what it's for. Check the comment section below, you know, comment down below. Check the description for my Twitch, Discord, and Twitter as well, which was recently made. And yeah, check all the videos on my channel and all that stuff. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Bye bye